I'm Jessica Matthews. I'm president of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. It's a great pleasure to be here at, at Carnegie Europe, and particularly uh, as we host tonight um, uh, Mr. Shakashvili. Um, when he was first elected president of Georgia in 2000, January 2004, Mikhail Shakashvili was the youngest head of state in Europe. He has presided over eight uh, tumultuous years of history um, uh, in which uh, his country has seen wide-ranging reform, armed conflict, and now uh, competitive parliamentary elections which were watched closely around the world. Uh, on a, an effective crackdown on corruption and progressive legislation on the rights of minorities, both deserve mention among the many changes uh, that have taken place over the last few years. Here in Brussels, Georgia has moved forward in its ambition to one day join NATO. It has made progress in visa liberalization uh, with the European Union and has started negotiations on a deep and comprehensive free trade area as well. It's not often that we congratulate someone for losing an election, but when the opposition Georgian dream won last month's parliamentary elections, President Chakashvili and his party conceded defeat gracefully. That's not uh, something that is very common in this part of the world and we take note of it and, and give him full credit for it. Mr. Shakashvili remains president now for, and must govern in tandem uh, with Mr. Ivanishvili for uh, the coming year, uh, a very challenging task. And we will be interested to learn how that partnership is developing, how Georgia's Western friends can help the country in this period, and what lessons uh, the president draws from his party's defeat in the October elections. We have a special treat tonight, thanks to the Georgian delegation. Mr. President, we are honored to have you at Carnegie Europe, and, uh, to, and we look forward to hearing uh, from you tonight. So please join me in welcoming the president of Georgia, Mikhail Shakashvili. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, first of all, for this gracious invitation. I am very pleased to be here. Uh, we had uh, last two days uh, the meeting with the uh, President of the European Parliament, um, Secretary General of NATO, the President of the European Union. But obviously, this is also a nice uh, treat in the end of my visit uh, here. Um, and it happened so that we were in town uh, together with Prime Minister. It was Real, really a coincidence. Uh, my visit was planned one year before, but somehow it was a Georgian three days in, in Brussels. And uh, it is a very interesting period, and it is a very, you know, promising, but at the same time dramatic period for our country. First of all, one has to say that, you know, Georgia had had a very important benchmarks for the last eight years. Um, we developed with pace, which is unheard of in many parts of the world. Uh, the, uh, for out of eight years, for f four years, we enjoyed double digit growth. We had 7% growth last year. We were expecting 8% growth this year. Uh, poverty was decreased two and a half times. Um, the overall Georgia was ranked as uh, uh, number nine on World Bank uh, list of doing business environment, which is, um, uh, you know, it's top league. No other developing country has ever made it to top ten. Uh, just to mention, say, for instance, Russia is 137th in that list, and many other post-Soviet countries are below 100, like uh, lower than 100. Uh, the, we were, according to the European Union study, the least corrupt country in Europe last year already. Um, uh, uh, the, according to, again, to the European Union's three years studies during three years, we were the least, uh, we were the safest country in Europe, least criminalized. Now, this has all the, against the backdrop of where we were eight, nine, ten years ago, where we were one of the worst, one of the most criminalized, one of the most corrupt. Uh, so, obviously, Georgia has shown examples of development, and the biggest question was, is it some kind of uh, 
just uh, I think the biggest blame was is it some kind of semi-authoritarian or authoritarian place where you know I mean there might be modernizing rulers but in the end they never give up power and they actually uh, these elections gave answer to that question we uh, hand it over not only the transition was very smooth because in the first few days we brought um, representatives of new coalition to every ministry to run these ministries de facto. We gave them uh, uh, total control of uh, information, of uh, financial flows. We also uh, gave them full access to um, you know, all the files of the government on internal and foreign policy. We didn't have to hand over under the present constitution, Ministry of Justice, uh, Prosecutor's Office, Minister of Defense or Ministry of Interior. We did give it to them because we thought that government should have been full and uh, fully responsible for what they were supposed to do. So overall, this was a very uh, smooth transition. Um, we believe that there is an incentive to build on, on this momentum for the whole region. You know, this was a powerful example. I mean, Vladimir Putin, who, to say it mildly, doesn't like me or my government, didn't like my government. He, uh, he on the one hand, he should have been rejoicing of what happened, but on the other, if you see the example of having free elections in that part of the world, it's a bad example for the region and also for the Russians from his perspective. Um, so having said that, uh, uh, of course, I cannot hide that I'm concerned by some of the developments already after handing over power. We have uh, cases and Secretary General of NATO said today and two days ago uh, that he's extremely concerned by arrests of uh, political opponents in Georgia. Uh, Juan Manuel Barroso spoke uh, about selective justice, and the same was reiterated by uh, Mr. Van Rompuy. A um, number of higher level arrests took place, former Minister of Defense and Interior, uh, one person, but uh, head of Joint Chief of Staff, uh, a number of other officials from military and police. Case were started against uh, uh, presidential Protection Service. The, basically, also some people from against uh, in basically against the mayor's office of Tbilisi. There was um, strong. There was a financial fraud case started against public broadcaster of Georgia, and the announcement was made that uh, uh, about that. So these are certain matters of concern to us. Uh, but uh, mm, otherwise, uh, having with all these things, one thing should be made clear. Georgia cannot and will not go back to any other sphere of influence but to Europe. There is no constituency in Georgia whatsoever that will ever allow to tr back away from that. So what we really need, that despite all the shortcomings, despite all the setbacks, we really need to move forward. And we really need to... Um, get uh, association agreement with you, we should get be ready to get EU perspective for Georgia. And we should certainly get visa liberalization and all the things which are on pipe and uh, I think we are pretty happy to do that. So the fact that, oh, okay, if Europe doesn't accept Georgia, it will go somewhere else, well, it has no other place to go to. The, the only thing that is uh, clearly important to understand is that we should uh, uh, be in a situation in, the, in which we cannot go back, say, to all the Russian domination sphere, be in position to go to Europe. That's what really matters now. And the other thing is that no matter who will try what, you cannot privatize Georgian state institutions and you cannot uh, hijack something that people are used to. That's free, vigorous free media, civil society, strong self-government. We just need to now get used to this new situation where there is cohabitation, where there is some coordination at different levels. But otherwise, if you go further than that, that some people will try to just you know, kill all the freedoms because uh, and shut down the political system, it's not doable. 
it would have been doable in Georgia 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I think well, something that Rose Revolution made very reversible is exactly that the people are used to these kind of benefits. I think some other things can, be, can go wrong, but this cannot be reversed. The, taste of people for freedom and, and the other taste people have got for, for also undeniably for the successful government for the last eight years. They know what the standard of success looks like already. It's not like against the backdrop of chaos that new government or, or inefficiency and failing government that the new government has come in, where there will be need for authoritarianism. Now, everybody knows that Georgia had successful government, including our opponents. And uh, so, that's because of that, you cannot really reverse it. Uh, you know, Putin came after Yeltsin, and people were longing for some kind of order because Yeltsin's Russia was a mess. We had Georgia that was very orderly and uh, fast developing place, and turned out to be a real democracy as well. And that's something that we value a lot. So that's more or less what I, I have to say today. And uh, whatever questions you might get, I'm there to ask and answer them. I'm in Brussels while the Prime Minister is also here. Is there no coordination? Who is running foreign policy in, in Georgia? Is not bad for the image of Georgia that, uh, that well, you two are meeting? I understand it's a very, you know, it's really quite sharp transition. It was smooth from our side, but it's sharp in terms of experiences, people. Um, and uh, yeah, that's. I cannot say that I'm rejoicing this fact. I was in White one month earlier, uh, together with, with the Prague Parliamentary Assembly, so it was a combination of two visits. Uh, obviously, once Prime Minister got into office, he got his invitation from the same institutions. I guess we, we all have to coordinate. Also, those institutions have to coordinate. But, um, but anyway, in any case, I'm happy they are here. They were here because it's also a very much a educational process for them. They get lots of new information. Because it's one thing to interact with hired lobbies that can't sell you just any picture. The other thing is when you come and see real people, real institutions, real leaders, and real issues, discuss real issues with them. And from that point of view, I was not pleased by the level of criticism they got, which was pretty high immediately. For, for the first visit, it was not something that I'm not pleased because I really want Georgia to advance. I mean, it's obvious. And uh, you know, more we advance in this direction, more safer democracy will be anyway. So that's from us, it's not just you know altruistic thing. I believe that it's, it's uh, you know, it's a very useful process for everybody.